You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramam Peshem Yisrael 2016. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Naso, if you're in Chutzlarts, if you're outside of Israel. And soon we're going to get to the thought that I have for you on this week's Parsha. But before we do, just want to give you an update where we're up to. I'm trying to raise $10,000 for my Safer, for my book, which will be coming out in, within the next few months. And... Uh, so far, as of now, we've raised, we've had, Baruch Hashem, a nice response so far. We've raised $782.60. So we've, since last week, gathered over $430. And I'd like to thank everyone who has already donated. And I'd like to encourage all of my listeners to take part in this mitzvah, a great opportunity to spread Torah, to spread inspiration. You can do it by going onto my website, arigoldwag.com and clicking on the contact page, there, there's a donate button, and when you donate, you can write in that it's for my Torah book. I'll also add that sponsorships are available for a donation of $500 or more, $1,000. There will be pages at the beginning of the book for dedications and sponsorships. Now to the thought that I'd like to share with you this week. The Torah tells us that Hashem gave a command. This is in chapter 6, verse 22. Vaidavar Hashem Moshe Lemur, God spoke to Moses and said, Daber al Aaron vel Banav Lemor, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, Kaisavarchu es bene Israel. This is how you are to bless the children of Israel. Amor lahem, say to them as follows. Yivarechacha Hashem v'yishmerecha. This is a famous blessing, the priestly blessing. May God bless you and protect you. Yoyer Hashem panav elecha v'chuneka. May God shine his countenance upon you and give you grace. Yisa Hashem panav elecha v'yasim lecha shalom. May God raise his countenance toward you and may he give you peace. I'd like to share with you a medrash, a beautiful medrash, that brings down the verse in Shir Hashirim in the Song of Songs, applies it to our verse of Yivarechecha, of the blessing of the priests, but also applies it elsewhere. And I'd like to see how, whenever the medrash does this, it's not just darshaning and, and saying ideas that are not connected. As you know, it's always saying an idea which is indeed deeply connected. There's a lesson to be learned from the fact that it was placed in the medrash, these ideas that were juxtaposed. So we need to understand what is the connection of them? Now, we have the verse in Shir Hashirim in Song of Songs. The verse tells us, Kol doidi hine zeba, verses in the second chapter of the Song of Songs, the voice of my beloved, which is a reference to God, God is our beloved, hine zeba, it's coming, medaleg al harim, skipping over the mountains, mekapetz al voice, jumping from the valleys, demedali litzviyar loifer ha'ayolim, the verse compares God to a deer, or to a young ram. There's that exuberance, that skipping, that jumping, that movement. And then the verse says something really interesting. The verse talks about God, our beloved, as standing behind a wall. Looking through the windows. And taking a glance from between the cracks. So the verse here describes three different ways where God interacts with us. One is from behind the wall, as it were. One is looking at us through the window, so to speak. And the third way is taking glances at us from between the cracks. Now the Medrash says something really interesting about Mashkiach Min HaChaloynes. One of the modes of God interacting with us is as if we're looking at Him through the window, or He's looking at us through the window. When God said to Aaron and to his sons that this is how you are to bless the Jewish people, Am Yisrael Lefnei HaKadosh Baruch the people of Israel said to God, Master of the world, you're, you're telling the priests that they should give us blessings. We don't want blessings through intermediaries. We want your direct blessings. We want you to bless us directly from your mouth. And this is something that we find elsewhere in the Torah. This is what it says in the verse in Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 15. Hashkifa mimayn kachecha min hashamayim. Look down from your exalted holy abode in the heavens. Uvareches amcha Yisrael. And give a blessing to your people of Israel. So we see that God blesses us directly. The Jewish people were challenging and saying, God, why do we need to have an intermediary? Why do we need the, pri- the priests to bless us? Why can't we get the blessings directly from you? Amr lam baruch So God responds to the Jewish people and He says, you need to understand something, that even though I told the priests that they're the ones who should bless you, 
מבורך אתכם. I stand with them and I bless you with them. לפיכך, says the Medrash an amazing thing, and therefore, הכהנים פרסים אסקפיהם. When the priests give this blessing, what do they do? They pick up their hands in the air. Why are they picking up their hands? Why don't they just say the blessing without anything to do with their hands? It's an indication of the fact that it's not just us doing it. We are acting as a channel. The blessings of God are coming through our hands, through our arms, and they're coming out to the Jewish people. God is standing. God is standing behind us, so to speak. And it also says in the verse that God is looking through the window. That God is also standing, not just behind them, but God is appearing through between the priests. If you look between them, so to speak, you can see that God is there giving that blessing. Not only that, the third aspect of the verse, which is taking that quick peek, so to speak, from between the cracks, that's also indicative of what's going on with the blessing of the priests. That God Himself is peeking through the cracks. The, the Kohan of the priests, when they give that blessing, so they separate their fingers. There's a crack between their second and third fingers, which allows the blessings of God to come through, to slip between the cracks, so to speak. Now, what I want to understand when we read this Medrash, what is the idea? The Jewish people are saying, hey, we want a direct revelation. We don't want to be behind the, the wall. We don't want to be we don't want Hashem to reveal Himself from people. Hashem, we want to get a blessing directly from you. Why is it that we need to receive it from the priests? And Hashem says, no, 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 I, I'm doing this directly, but I'm doing it through them. That's a contradiction. What is the understanding of the fact that Hashem is saying, I am giving you a direct blessing, but I'm doing it through them. I'm standing there, I'm speaking through them, they are a channel, but it's still not direct. What is the idea of this blessing that the priests are giving to us? Why can't we receive that blessing directly from Hashem? What indeed is the response of God to the Jewish people? Now I want to back up, because the way the Medrash is that the Medrash will quote a verse which it wants to eventually use to explain the verse that we're speaking about here in our Parsha, but it will first bring explanations which, seems to be, which seem to not be related, that are connected to other places in the Torah, and then it comes back to our verse. So I just share with you the, really the end of this Medrash, but I'd like to now go back to the first pieces in the Medrash which bring the same verse from Shir Hashirim, from the Song of Songs, and use it and apply it in a different place, in a different way seemingly. And once we start to understand what's going on in those places, we'll get more of an understanding of what's going on in our verse in regards to the priestly blessing. So the measure says like this, God is standing behind the wall. This is a reference to the wilderness of Sinai, to the Sinai Desert. God looks out from the windows. That's an open revelation. God is not behind the wall. God is not just, you know, in the, in the wilderness and, and helping us out from behind the scenes, but rather, Hashem is openly revealing Himself, looking at us through the windows. That's where Hashem comes down on Mount Sinai, reveals Himself, gives over the Torah. There's also an aspect at Mount Sinai, as Eitz Yosef explains, bringing from Shir Hashem Rabbah, where God is looking at us, He's taking a glance at us, or we can glance Him from between the cracks. Where do we see this? In the, in the Ten Commandments, when God speaks to the Jewish people, the entire Jewish nation has an open revelation of God. So the first two commandments were said directly to the Jewish people. God Himself spoke, and said, I am Hashem, your God. Those first two commandments were said directly. However, as our Chazal tell us, after that it switches. The language of the verses switch. No longer is it speaking directly because it's not Hashem speaking directly to the Jewish people, but rather it was Moses. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who was giving over the rest of the Ten Commandments to the Jewish people, acting as God's emissary. So here again we see that there are three different modes, three different ways that Hashem reveals Himself to us, interacts with us. One is behind the wall, behind the scenes. As we are traversing the wilderness of Sinai, God is there, He's giving us the mun, He's giving us the manna, He's giving us the water, all the things that are miraculous, but not openly clear that Hashem is there. Then we have the second one, which is where God looks at us through the window. We see God directly, and that's the first two commandments. And then we have the way that God reveals Himself, He's peeking through the cracks, not as openly clear, speaking to us through Moshe, and through Moses. Now here too, I want to try to understand, try to get to an understanding of why is it that there, were, there are these three different ways that Hashem interacts with us. 
Why is it sometimes behind the wall? Why is it sometimes openly revealed? And why is it indeed sometimes that, no, I need it through an emissary, I need it through a Moshe Rabbeinu, I can't have that direct revelation of Hashem. What is the understanding of these three modes? I'd rather have it directly from Hashem. Why do I have to hear Hashem's word from somebody else? This is about my relationship with God. Why can't I have that direct and open revelation all the time? Now I'd like to share with you another last piece in the Medrash, a beautiful description of an idea, and it's as follows. The verse says, part of this verse it says, that God is compared, my beloved one is compared to a deer. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says, I'm Rabbi Yisrael of Nekadosh Baruch Hu. The people of Israel said in front of God, Rabbi Master of the world, At Amart Lanu, At You said that you would come to us first, that you would reveal yourself openly. But that's not what it seems like, as we just described. There was an open revelation, but then it was taken away. You are like a tzvi, you are like a deer. Amazing thing. Just like a deer, if you watch a deer running through the forest, sometimes you can see it, sometimes it gets hidden behind foliage. So, very interesting. It seems to be saying two things. One is that God reveals Himself. So he's seen, you can see him. If you're looking, you're watching carefully, but he's running by, and he's getting hidden by the foliage, so to speak. And it's also true, not just for Hashem himself, but the person that he's manifesting through, when it comes to the concept of Mashiach, of the Messiah, so you have the same idea. We see that when it came to the Geulas Mitzrayim, the redemption, the Messiah of Egypt, which was Moshe Rabbeinu, which was Moses, so what happens is he comes, and he says, here I am, I'm the Messiah, I'm going to redeem you, Jewish people. But immediately after that, he was gone. He disappeared for a few months. The Medjus is going to say that he was gone for three months. There's another Medjus that says that he was missing for six months. What is the idea here? We see the Goyal. He comes, the Redeemer comes, he re- appears, but then he's, he's missing. God reveals himself to us. Then he disappears, so to speak. He hides himself. Rebrechi b'shem Rabbi Levi Omar, k'goyal harishan kach goyal ha'achrein. Rebrechi says the name of Rabbi Levi, an amazing thing. That not only is it true that in the Exodus, the first redemption, Moshe Rabbeinu, that we find that he revealed himself, and then he, he was hidden for a bit before he came and he did what he needed to do in order to completely redeem the Jewish people. It's going to be true also in the final redemption. When the Jewish people are redeemed from the exile, there's going to be an open revelation. Mashiach, the Messiah, is going to reveal himself, and then he's going to hide himself. There's going to be an opportunity for us to see him. He's going to disappear. It's going to seem like he's gone. The redemption is over. It's not, it's not happening. And then he's going to reveal himself again, and then the redemption is going to happen completely. Now, what's interesting is, the Meshish tells us that when it came to Moshe Rabbeinu, so he was hidden for three months. When it comes to the Goyal Achran, when it comes to the final Redeemer, he's going to be revealed and then hidden for only 45 days. Now, what happens in that interim period? So, the Meshish tells us like this, Ulehichan male oisan. Where does the final Redeemer bring them to? Whoever follows after him, who believes in him, where, where is he going to bring them to? It's the Amran, the Midbar Yehuda. There are those who say that he's going to bring them to the wilderness of Judah. And there are those who say, no, he's going to bring them to the wilderness area, the Sinai area, the Sinai Desert. Now it's really interesting, whoever believes in him, whoever places their faith in this Redeemer, and follows after him, so they eat these different types of herbs. I mean, it's going to be a challenging time. They're going to have to forage for their food out there in the desert area. But let's say somebody doesn't follow after him. What's going to happen? And he goes and he makes peace with the nations of the world. He doesn't believe in the Redeemer. What happens in the end is the person who doesn't end up believing, he doesn't have the faith in the Redeemer, he ends up killed by the nations of the world. But those who have that faith, who trust in the Redeemer, trust that Hashem's promised redemption is here at hand, so they will be saved. Not only that, Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Marion, Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Marion says, What happens at the end of these 45 days? Hashem Himself brings them down the manna, just like the Jewish people after they left Egypt, they had that redemption, and they received this mon, this manna, this amazing bread. So too the Jewish people in the future time, after the redemption, if they trust and they go out to the wilderness to follow after the Redeemer, they will also be able to receive this amazing miraculous manna. So here too we see that, and this is the lesson of the Medrash, that 
when Hashem is revealing Himself, which is the redemption, the redemption process is really, we're moving into a new relationship with Hashem. So when Hashem is about to reveal Himself, He's about to redeem the Jewish people, so there's a revelation, the Redeemer is here, everyone's excited. But then, He goes off, He disappears, it seems like He's not able to fulfill His mission, it seems like it's just a false hope. So what is the concept here? What is the idea that there's that revelation, there's a hiding of the revelation, and then very interestingly, for those who trust Him, after 45 days, they start to receive the manna. They start to receive the mun, this amazing, miraculous bread that rains down from heaven and sustains the Jewish people in a miraculous manner. What is the idea of the manna? Why is that what follows this whole process? Now, before we answer the question, before we get the clarity, I want to share with you two more pieces in this medrash, which really, once we get these ideas, once we get this concept, it will really give us a lot of clarity. The medrash tells us that in regards to the blessings. We spoke about the fact that Hashem gives the blessings sometimes directly. There's an idea that Hashem you know, looks down at us and gives us the blessings directly. But really mainly it's through the Kohanim. He's standing by their side, he's behind them, he's between them, coming through their fingers, etc. But there's another place where God blesses us and this is more direct. Medjur says like this, God is compared, my beloved is compared to a deer. Just like a deer, it jumps from one place to another, jumps from one fence to another, from one tree to another, from one protected area to another protected area. God also jumps, as it were, skips from one base knesses, from one synagogue to another. What is the idea? He's going around, and the Yitzhak explains, he's going around collecting the mitzvahs. He's looking, oh, what are the Jews doing in this synagogue? They're studying the Torah. They're giving tzedakah, giving charity. They're praying. They're taking different actions, bringing me into the world. When God sees all these things, He gathers all these merits, all these zechuyais. So He does this in order to give blessings to the Jewish people. The verse says that wherever you mention God's name, God says, I will come there and I will bless you. So we see that there's a mode of God's blessing which is direct. We see that God is directly blessing us when we fulfill the commandments, when we are gathered together to do mitzvahs together, to pray, to give charity, to study Torah. God gathers this together and blesses us directly. So we see that there are, again, there's another, there's, there's multiple modes. So again, how are we to understand this? When does it? When is it indeed that God blesses us directly? That we see God openly, so to speak. And when is it that God does it through people? What's the understanding here? So one last point. He says like this: What is the merit? Where do we get the merit for these blessings? The measure says the merit is from Avram Avinu, from Abraham. It says over here, Kaisivarchu. Over here, it says this is how you should bless the people of Israel. God instructs Aaron and his sons. The word koi, which means this, is also used in regards to Abraham. It says, ko yezarecha. This is how your offspring will be. There will be multitudes like the stars in the heaven. So what do we see? There's something that we see in regards to Abraham, the measure says, which teaches, teaches us a profound lesson in regards to how we're to view the blessings of God. It says like this, God stands behind the, the wall, so to speak. Listen to this very interesting idea. When God came to visit Abraham, it was the third day after he had had his circumcision. He was an old man, 99 years old. The verse says that God revealed himself to, to Abraham, and Abraham was sitting. The verse refers to the fact that he sat. Why does it say it that way? In other words, it's written without a vav. It's not written yoshev, which means sitting, but rather it's written yudshin beis, which could also be read as yoshav, he sat. What is this teaching us? Balamoid. The verse wrote it in a different way to teach us the lesson that Abraham, when he saw the revelation of God, he wanted to stand up. God says to him, no, 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 I want you to remain seated. You are going to do something which will indicate something that your children will do. When your children come in to the places of worship, to the synagogues, to the places of study, 
and they say Shema, they're sitting, and they're saying, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. They're saying, Hear, O Israel, Hashem your God, Hashem is on, which is a verse that's an obligation for us to say twice a day. The Yeshvim, what are they doing? When they say Shema, they sit. Uchvaydi Aymed. But I'm going to be standing, my honor, my divine presence will be standing there. Thus, I will be in one state, I will be standing, they will be sitting. I want you to also be sitting here, and I will be standing, to indicate that that's what's going to be in the future time as well. What is the lesson of this Medrash? What is indicated by the fact that Hashem is standing up and we're sitting? We also stand, right? When it comes to the Birkas Kayanim, when we had the priestly blessings, the priests stand, we stand in front of them. Or the Amida, the prayer, the 18-fold prayer that we say, the Shemon Esrei, we stand. What is it teaching us that there's a part of the davening that we sit and Hashem, as it were, is standing in front of us? And I think that what the Medrash is ta- trying to teach us is that Hashem has different ways of interacting with us. There are different ways that we perceive Hashem. There are different ways that we experience Hashem's relationship with us. And so we talk about Him standing behind the wall. We talk about Him looking at us through the window. We talk about Him peeking through the cracks. But that's really always how we perceive it. It's never actually how Hashem is interacting or feeling towards us. Hashem is always standing. Even when we are sitting, even when our relationship is Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu, where we only hear God, we don't see God. Our eyes are closed, our face is covered. We're saying Shema Yisrael, hear O Israel. Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, Hashem our God is one. Sometimes we need to hear it, we don't see it. Avram Avinu Abraham, when he was sitting there, when was he sitting there? What was this interaction? Why was he told to sit down, in, specifically in this spot? Because he was experiencing something, he had just done Hashem's will. But he didn't experience such a good result from it. He was in pain. It was the third day of his Mila. He was in pain. He had done something which was God's will, and he experienced pain as a result. We would think that whatever, whenever I do God's will, good things come out of it. But no. Hashem wants him to see, no, 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 you're sitting here. You don't see me openly at this moment, but I am still standing. I am standing, but you are sitting. My relationship with you is constant. My relationship with you, Hashem is saying, is I'm always standing. Even when I'm behind the wall, you don't see me, I'm behind the wall, but I am standing. I am still in a, in a full relationship. When someone is standing, I'm coming to greet you, I stand. When I'm coming to receive a blessing, I stand. When I'm coming to talk to God, I stand. That's, that's that relationship, that Shimon Esrei, that 18 fold prayer, this, it's a standing. It's a full relationship. The Kohanim, when they give that blessing, they stand. But the nature of our relationship with Hashem is such that we experience it differently than it actually is. And it's only from our perspective. We see it differently. It seems that Hashem is behind the cracks. We can barely make out that God is there at all. And sometimes I don't see Him at, really at all. It's not even, you can't even see between the cracks. It seems like sometimes Hashem is not blessing us directly. There's a blessing that's happening through the priests. We want the open revelation. We want to experience you directly, Hashem. That's not the reality that we live in. Sometimes, yes, we have that open revelation, but if we always have that open revelation, we get burned out. That's the reality. That's the reality that we live in. We live in a place where we can't have that open revelation at all times. But Hashem is saying to us an amazing thing, that even though you have a different experience of my relationship with you, I'm always there standing. Even when the blessing is coming from the priests, it seems it's coming from the priests. I am standing here. The blessing is really coming from me. The blessing is really, it's really me. You just see it as if I'm behind the priests. You just see it as if I'm coming between the priests or that I'm coming, the blessings are coming from between their fingers, from between the cracks. But that's your perception of it. And that's not the truth of the reality of it. The truth of the reality of it is that even though we perceive it that way, even though sometimes we don't see Hashem, or it seems that Hashem is sending blessings through someone else, the truth is that the blessings are always really directly coming from God. Sometimes it seems that God is hiding in the wilderness. We don't see Him directly. Then Hashem openly reveals Himself and says the first of the Ten Commandments, we see him, but then Hashem sends it through Moshe Rabbeinu. Don't make a mistake, the Medrash is saying. It's always Hashem standing behind it all. Sometimes it seems like the Redeemer has arrived. It seems like here he is. It's time. It's Mashiach. It's the time. The Redeemer has arrived. And then he disappears. And it seems like God is no longer revealing himself. God is no longer redeeming us. But it's a mistake. 
And that's why they go off to the Midbar, to that very place where God stood behind the scenes and provided for the Jewish people. And for those who indeed have that faith, despite the darkness, realize Hashem is still standing. Hashem is still standing, it's just behind the wall. Then they receive the manna. The manna always represents the trust of the Jewish people. It's the bread of emuna. It's the bread of trust, which represents the fact that we know that everything that we see, that seems to not be Hashem, it seems that God is not there. God is there. So those who hold out with their faith, they receive that bread. And amazingly, beautifully, one little piece, which I didn't share with you yet, from this Medrash, the final thing that I want to say, is that the Medrash says, Yinezah kaslenu. What is this wall that Hashem is standing behind? It's the Maravi. It's the Western Wall, Shalbeis Hamikdash, of the Temple, which you can go to today, which will never be destroyed, because the Divine Presence is in the West. That means that the very place where God, it seems, it's not there, where the the Temple is destroyed, the the nations of the world were able to destroy our Temple, able to place their Temple upon our mountain. That it seems like God has given up on us. No, no, no. The, the, the wall itself, the Western Wall, represents the fact that God never gave up the Jewish people. That even where it seems there's absolute destruction, God is still there, even in a place where there's the greatest hiddenness. God is still there, standing in the same relationship with us as He always had, even though it seems, from our perspective, that we can't see it at all. That we have to really strain our ears to even hear that that's happening. I want to bless you, and please bless me back. Hashem should help us to absorb this idea, to recognize that He's there through it all, that He's standing there, His relationship with us is always constant, that the chisar and the lack is only in our perception. Hashem should help us to have a full perception and to trust and to live in faith even when the perception is not as clear. Hashem should help us to recognize that looking at the Western Wall, Hashem should give us the ability to see the final redemption, to meet that final Redeemer, to stand by Him, even when it seems that He has to be hidden, and to remain with that faith, knowing that Hashem always was and always will be, standing behind that wall, and soon standing right in front of our very eyes, showing us His relationship with Him. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.